Do you guys remember the old saying about Hyundais? Hope you understand nothing's drivable and inexpensive. Ouch. That's what people used to think about the brand back in the 1980s when the company first came to America with the Excel. You guys remember the Excel, right? It was a cheap, little, inexpensive commuter car that quickly sold out in its first year. However, quality issues caught up to them, which gave Hyundai that poor reputation. Now today, Hyundai is the third largest auto manufacturer across the globe when you look at volume. And in today's video, I wanna go over some of the reasons for their success and figure out where the company is going in the future. But of course, that was then and this is now. And today, Hyundai is a very different car company than what they were about 52 years ago. Now, a little bit of background history with Hyundai. They were actually founded back in 1967. And then about 19 years later, they brought their first car to America on February 20th, 1986. The Hyundai XL or the Hyundai Pony in other parts of the world. That was exactly 34 years ago today. And back then they managed to sell about 168,000 cars in the first year. That actually set a record as the most cars sold for the first year for a new brand. And that's because the car was inexpensive to buy. It was a fuel efficient car. It was exactly what America needed back in 1986. Unfortunately, it didn't last long as the Excel's extreme cost cutting measures caused reliability to suffer and sales plummeted the following year. Remember that old joke that I said in the beginning? Hyundai used to stand for, hope you understand, nothing's drivable and inexpensive. Unfortunately, some people still remember that old butt of the joke with Hyundai and their quality. However, in response to all of that negative press, Hyundai invested heavily in quality and durability and long-term reliability and to, in order to build consumer confidence, they added a free two-year, 24,000-mile maintenance plan to all cars sold in 1992 and also added their signature 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, which is still in effect and offered today, which is still one of the best warranty coverages that you can get in the industry. Now, thankfully, that all paid off, and by the early 2000s, sales and brand perception had improved significantly, and today, sales are up drastically. Now, of course, where does that leave Kia in the mix? Now, Kia used to be their own standalone company. They were a rival Korean brand to Hyundai. And when the company first came to the States back in 1992, they did so with two products, the Cepheo, which was an inexpensive compact car. And then of course the Sportage, which is still in production and sold today, which was a compact truck-based SUV back then. Today, it's a completely different animal. It's a car-based crossover SUV. Now, unfortunately for Kia, they had to file for bankruptcy back in 1997, and that is where they were picked up by Hyundai. Hyundai purchased about 51% of Kia back then, and today Hyundai owns about 33, so a third percent of Kia, which is why you see the companies share a lot of parts. They are essentially the same cars, but remember they are run by two different departments owned by the same parent company, which is the Hyundai Motor Group. So let's take a look at sales volume because Hyundai and Kia together are one of the top performing brands here in America. Last year in 2019, Hyundai sold a total of 688,771 units. That's actually up 3% from 2018, which bucks the trend of the industry, which is down about 2% when you look at all of the other manufacturers. Now, Kia's sales total in 2019 was about 615,338 units. That's actually up more versus Hyundai. They were up 4.4% percent from 2018. Now between the two brands, they sold 1.3 million cars here in the U.S. in all of 2019. Now let's look at the comparison between Hyundai and all the other brands here in the U.S. I'm going to focus primarily on the Japanese players because they're the ones that Hyundai and Kia primarily target whenever they develop vehicles. Now Toyota last year sold about 2 million cars in the U.S. in all of 2019. They were down about 2 percent, which is pretty much in line with the rest of the industry. Honda was right behind Toyota. They sold about 1.6 million cars in 2019, which is actually up, but only up 0.2%. So still up, but not up quite as much as some of the competition. Nissan is also another legacy player that does typically pretty well. Last year, the company sold about 1.2 million cars. If you guys wanna watch my video about Nissan and what happened to them in 2019, feel free to click on the link in the description below where I talk about what are some of the problems with Nissan. Nissan was down, as you guys know, a staggering 8.7% in sales 
in the US, which again, can be attributed to a couple of other factors. Subaru has always been um, part of the industry as being a huge success. The company last year sold about 700,000 cars in all of 2019 and they were up about 3%. Subaru has been basically experiencing year over year growth for the last several years. And then of course the smaller Japanese brand Mazda, they sold just under 280,000 car cars here in the US. They were unfortunately down about 7%. That's gonna be another video. But as you can see, Hyundai and Kia are about number three on those lists of Japanese cars in terms of sales volumes here in the US. So obviously Hyundai was a huge success here in America. So let's break down some of the company's top selling vehicles. Now I have a little list here to help me remember which ones they were. The Hyundai Elantra was the top selling car here in America last year with about 175,000 units sold. Right behind it was the Tucson, their small SUV, which sold about 137,000 units. And then of course, third place goes to the Hyundai Santa Fe, which is just a class above the Tucson at about 127,000 units. That car competes with midsize entries like the Ford Edge and the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, there isn't all such good news with Hyundai sales. There were a couple of, or there was actually one big loser, and that was the Sonata last year, which sold about 87,000 units in 2019, which was down from 105,000 units from 2018. But that also kind of shows that buyers are moving toward crossovers. And Hyundai, remember, just introduced an all new version of the Sonata, which should help the company bounce back sales for the 2020 model year of that family sedan. Now, in between the top sellers and the losers at Hyundai's lineup, there were a couple of vehicles that had a ton of growth. Now, of course, the first vehicle at Hyundai is the new Palisade. That's a car that's been on sale since July of 2019, and Hyundai managed to sell about 28,000 here in America for only about eight months or maybe less than that, six months, five months of the year. So remember that car is building momentum. It's a really hot car. If you want to get a Palisade, you're going to be paying sticker or more for that vehicle, just like its sister car from Kia, the Telluride. Another vehicle that also saw a huge growth was the Kona, their small subcompact SUV. Last year, Hyundai managed to sell about 73,000 units here in the States, which was up from about 47,000 in 2018. Although I don't believe the Kona was on sale for a full year in 2018. So that's kind of where you need to put a little asterisk there. Now, of course, over at Kia, there were a couple of other top sellers at that brand, and the top selling vehicle at Kia was the all new Kia Soul. The company managed to move about 98,000 souls in America, which was right behind or right in front of the Kia Optima, which sold about 96,000 units here in the States. So it actually outsold the Sonata. A lot of people tend to prefer the Optima's looks over the Sonata. I am very much looking forward to the next generation Optima, which Kia should be showing later this year. The Sorento was right behind the Optima, which very close numbers, which sold about 95,951, so just under 96,000 units. Um, the Forte was right behind the Sorento at 95,609 units. And then of course the Sportage, which is the company's longest and oldest running vehicle, managed to sell about 89,000 units here in the States. The Telluride, I have it as number six because that car has only been on sale for about eight months and Kia managed to sell about 58,000. So more than double that, uh, or almost double what Hyundai did out of the Palisade, despite the fact that it did have like a two month head start over the Hyundai. I am imagining Kia should be able to hit a six figure mark for the Telluride. Maybe even Hyundai do the same thing for the Palisade for the 2020 model year. So let's start going over some of the reasons why Hyundai and Kia are killing it right now. Now, obviously there are several factors, but I'm gonna go over about eight, which I think are the most significant factors. Now, starting with the first one, there has been a significant rise in build quality and reliability. Now, obviously Hyundai and Kia ha have their five year, 60,000 mile comprehensive warranty, and then a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty, which is transferable. That is still the best warranty in the industry. It even surpasses what you're gonna find in some luxury brands. So the fact that Hyundai is able to stand behind their products with that strong warranty, obviously is going to build with consumer confidence. It's going to bring up the brand image for the brand, which has been super successful here in America. Now that rise in build quality and perception obviously led to my number two, which was improved brand perception. Number three for me has to do with high features for not much money. That's the thing about Hyundai and Kia is they are packed with value. You get a lot of features like heated and cooled seats, a panoramic sunroof, leather interiors, you know, their full Hyundai safety sense driving assistance stuff for not that much money. Money, For example, that 2020 Hyundai Veloster behind me has things like a head up display, heated seats, adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, uh, a bigger panoramic sunroof, uh, a turbocharged engine with a dual clutch. That car there is about $29,000, which does sound like a lot of money, but it is packed with features that you really could 
couldn't only you could really only get on luxury cars uh, just five years ago. Now another factor that has really helped Kia and Hyundai succeed a lot here in the U.S. are the right products. The Telluride and the Palisade were launched last year around the same time, and they have been a huge, huge hit for Hyundai and Kia. The dealers just can't keep them in stock because everybody wants one. The factories just can't produce the cars fast enough, and the result is cars that are transacting at sticker or higher because everybody wants to get their hands on them. My, myself included, if you guys are looking for a three-row crossover, that is some of the best ones that you can buy. Now, of course, three-row crossovers are hot here in America, but you also have great products like the Kona, the upcoming Kia Seltos, which are, of course, going to be competing in the ultra-fierce subcompact SUV segment. And then Hyundai just introduced the new Sonata. There's a new Optima that's coming out as well. I just drove the new Sonata. I was very impressed with the interior, with the drive. There's also a high performance end line coming. And Hyundai has also, again, refocused their shift on SUVs. In the past, Hyundai was kind of downward trending in sales because they didn't have enough SUVs in their portfolio. Now that is simply not the case. While we do have a new sedan coming in the form of the Sonata and the Optima, sales for Hyundai in terms of SUVs have accounted for about 52% last year, which was up from 46% in 2018. So again, Hyundai is introducing the right products for the right time, and it's giving them a huge increase in sales here in America. Now, another reason why Hyundai and Kia are simply killing it is because they managed to hire the right help. A few years ago, they hired Peter Schreier from Audi to be the head of their design department. And then, of course, a couple of years later, they hired, they hired Albert Bierman from BMW's M division, the vice president of BMW's M division, because they wanted to turn around the driving dynamics. Hyundai's have always had amazing value, uh, amazing quality, you know, really great, a really great warranty, but they were always lagging behind in terms of steering feel, in terms of driving performance, in terms of engagement. So that brings me to the next category on why they're killing it, and that's better street cred because they have hired the right help. For example, I'm driving this 2020 Hyundai Veloster Turbo Ultimate with the dual clutch transmission. Now, this isn't even the hottest version. If you feel, if you want, just go ahead and watch one of my videos on the Veloster N, which is the hottest version of this car. But even just the lukewarm version, the warm uh, version of the Veloster N, when you put the, or of the Veloster Turbo, when you switch the drive mode over here to sport, put the transmission to sport mode itself, this thing has the kind of driving fun that I associated with Hondas just 10 years ago. I mean, the Veloster in general, the fact that Hyundai did a second generation on such a low volume car really speaks you know, to the brand um, that they're trying to go after enthusiasts. I mean, 10 years ago, for me, I would have easily put this car on my short list if I was looking for, you know, a high school or college car. Front drive, you can see it's cold outside, but this thing has enough power to put a smile on my face. The front tires will spin because remember, this one has an open differential. But just the better street cred in general, I mean, not even just the Veloster, this is on the cheap end of the scale. If you guys have more money to spend, you're looking for you know, a sports sedan, there's the Kia Stinger, which is technically a hatch, and the Genesis G70. Those are also two vehicles that I would easily put against the best from Japan, from America, from Europe even. Uh, the Kia Stinger is probably more of my choice because I love the fact that it's a hatch, it's a slightly bigger bigger car, you can get either the Genesis G70 or the Stinger with a two liter turbo four, which may be replaced with a 2.5 turbo four in the coming years, or that 3.3 liter twin turbo V6. All of them offer amazing performance. The V6 is probably the one I would choose you know, as an enthusiast, you can get it in either rear or all wheel drive. I mean, this is stuff that the Japanese just aren't even doing. And Hyundai and Kia and Genesis are just simply killing it. I mean, <laughs> Just a couple of years ago, you couldn't even and you know think to have this much fun in a Hyundai product. And this car starts at like twenty thousand dollars as a Veloster Turbo that I'm driving, and the way it handles around corners just clearly shows that they hired the right guy from BMW M division to be in charge of their handling dynamics. Now, another area where Hyundai has the edge over its competitors are a standout design. Now, of course. Every manufacturer goes through their ups and downs. I think Hyundai was really on a strong point back in 2011 with the sixth generation Sonata, which really introduced a lot of style back into family sedans. In the mid 2000s, they kind of lost their way and designs got a little bit too conservative and just didn't stand out enough. However, the Veloster has always been a car that has really helped Hyundai propel themselves as a design leader in the industry. This is a car that is super unique because remember, this is the second generation model and they still offer this funky, 
three door design. So as you can see here on the driver's side, we have this big long door because it looks like a coupe. It is a coupe on the driver's side, but then coming over to the passenger side here, Hyundai has a door that is much smaller for this side because there's another third door over here. And the fact that this car is also a hatchback. So again, a super unique design and Hyundai has capitalized on this unique design by offering the Veloster with finally a plethora of powertrain options. So you can get a base two liter uh, four cylinder that's kind of your commuter car. This one that I have here is the Veloster Turbo Ultimate, which has a 1.6 liter turbo with 201 horsepower. And then of course, for all you enthusiasts out there, they've got the hot Veloster N, which has up to 275 horsepower and an exhaust note that would make a Civic Type R jealous. Now, because Hyundai and Kia have had so much success here in America in terms of sales, it allowed the brand to launch their own luxury division. About three years ago, Genesis, if you guys remember, used to be a Hyundai model. However, in 2017, the company spun it off as their own luxury division. And the company is actually getting ready to show off their first ever SUV, the Genesis GV80, which they just unveiled in Korea this month. I'll actually be showing you guys a full video, a first look video on that car when I fly out to Miami at the end of this month. So stay tuned for that. So it's pretty obvious that Hyundai and Kia are building some phenomenal products and they are a full line automaker. So on to my next subject here. What are some Hyundai and Kia vehicles that I would personally buy with my own money if I was in the market for a car? Well, there are several vehicles on this list. And if you asked me this question 15 years ago, I would have told you none. There were no Hyundai and Kia vehicles that I would personally buy. Today, that is a completely different story because the first cars that I want to talk about if I was in the market for a car, a family SUV for uh, for the most part, it would be the Hyundai Palisade and Kia Telluride. I would easily put those vehicles at the very top of my shopping list simply because they are just that good. The Palisade and the Telluride are in such hot demand right now that people are actually paying over sticker price for one of those vehicles right now because they're so good. They kind of remind me of the way the Honda Odyssey was back in the 1998, 99 model year when that new generation first came out or the Honda Pilot when that first came out back in 2003. They were hot products that everybody, every American family wanted. And that's the way the Hyundai Palisade and Kia Telluride are. They're both really good. And really choosing one is going to come down to your personal taste in terms of design. I prefer the look of the Telluride more, so I would easily buy one over everything else right now in the mainstream three row crossover segment. Now, what if I was in the market for a sports sedan? Well, easy. I would easily pick either the Kia Stinger or the Genesis G70. As I said earlier, they're available with a turbo four or a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6. I would probably lean more toward the Stinger because I prefer the bigger size and the hatchback versatility of the Stinger. But if you prefer a sedan, the G70 is phenomenal. It has a really nice interior, amazing handling, handles like you know a previous generation BMW M car did. Um, the sound of the motors could use a little more bark to them, but they're a nice refined car that kind of reminds you they are, you know, more premium slash luxury sedans if you go skew toward more gen toward Genesis. The only downside between the two, the back seats are a little tight. The Stinger is not quite as tight as the G70. So if you need more trunk space, you need more backseat legroom, I would buy the Kia Stinger. Now, what if I wanted something a little bit sportier, but not super expensive? So we're talking about hot hatches here. Well, I'm driving this 2020 Veloster Turbo Ultimate with the dual clutch. I would easily buy this car if I was like in college, I was looking for a fun, you know, spunky little hot hatch that didn't, you know, look like everything else on the road. This car has that three door box, you know, three door body style with the half door uh, or the full size door on the passenger side, but no door on the other side. This 1.6 turbo that this car has offers plenty of power. And Hyundai has also addressed the faults that I had with the one with the seven speed dual clutch. You know, when this transmission first came out about 10 years ago, it got a nickname for being called the eco shit transmission. That's right, because it was such a terrible dual clutch. And as you can see now, plopping into sport mode, it's in seventh right now. When I put my foot down, it drops down to fourth almost immediately. And even though it doesn't kind of have like the crackles and the burbles that you get from you know, a Porsche PDK or a Volkswagen GTI. This is a far cry better versus the earlier renditions. And it shows that Hyundai and Kia are, are listening to the customer complaints and they're addressing the faults. They're working on a new eight speed wet clutch, dual clutch all wheel or transmission that will be putting, be going into the Hyundai Sonata N line. 
Now, what if you're looking for a small SUV? What if you want an SUV, but you don't need the three row capacity? Well, I haven't driven the new 2021 Kia Seltos, but I would buy the Hyundai Kona, which is that car's sister vehicle, with ha which has the same powertrain as this, the 1.6 liter turbo with the seven speed dual clutch. As long as it drives just like this 2020 Veloster, you know, turbo in terms of the shift programming, um, and the smoothness, I would easily pick the Kona over all of its subcompact offerings. And I'm planning to drive the Kia Seltos next month in Texas at the Media Drive. Uh, and if that car drives just as good as the Kona, I would probably choose the Seltos because I prefer the design of the Seltos a little bit more. But really, if you guys are looking for one of those new small subcompact SUVs, you can't go wrong with a Hyundai and Kia product today. A couple of honorable mentions that I may consider as well. If you guys are looking for a family sedan, I would highly put the Hyundai Sonata, the new one at the very top of my list, but I'm gonna also have to wait until I fully drive the N-Line model because you guys nail me, I'm power hungry. I want the N-Line version, which I drove a prototype camouflage model in Phoenix, Arizona last month. I was good, for the most part impressed, although it needs a little bit more fine tuning in terms of the sound, in terms of the shift quality. But don't forget that the 2021 Kia Optima is also coming out. That will all be essentially the same car with the turbo powertrain in a GT trim and with the availability of all wheel drive. So now that we've gone over the reasons why Hyundai is doing so well as a brand here in America, let's talk a little bit about the future of Hyundai and Kia. Now, obviously there are a lot of exciting new products in the industry that's coming out every year. Hyundai and Kia are no exception, but I've compiled a list of cars that you should be most excited for at Hyundai and Kia that's coming in the next couple of years. And the first one is a fully dedicated BEV car. That's right, a battery electric vehicle that has its own unique platform that should be able to challenge the like of something like the Tesla Model 3, which has enjoyed a lot of success here in America. We're not entirely sure whether the car will be branded as either a Hyundai product or a Genesis product, but we do know that Hyundai is working diligently on it and it should be coming to the States in just a couple short years. Another vehicle that we've been anxiously waiting Hyundai to build is a pickup truck. And the company showed off the Santa Cruz uh, concept truck a couple of years ago. It finally got the green light for production. We don't know yet you know, the powertrain specs or, you know, exactly, you know, the full on specs of that vehicle, but it should be a new midsize truck offering that'll go head to head with something like the Toyota Tacoma, the Ford Ranger, the GM uh, twins, the Colorado and the Canyon and so forth, and even the Honda Ridgeline. Now over at Genesis, you guys know about the upcoming GV80, which I'll actually be flying down to Miami at the end of this month to show you guys a first look video on that. But Genesis is also working on a new flagship coupe, which they have confirmed because as you guys know, with a luxury brand, you need to have uh, an aspirational model to put in the uh, showroom so people can ooh and awe and drool over the car. And in addition to that sports car that Genesis should be showing, they also will be redesigning the G80, which was the company's original model. Uh, alongside the G90, which was again, the old Equus and Genesis sedan. You should be seeing an all new G80 in the next year or so. Now you guys heard me mention this one before, the upcoming 2021 Kia Optima. Now I drove the new Sonata back in Phoenix last, this, last month and I was blown away with that vehicle. Kia will be showing off the US version of the Optima. We already saw the K5 that they showed in Korea. Beautiful looking car. The Optima should come standard with turbo power. It'll also offer the N-Lines powertrain, that 2.5 turbo, and it should be offered with all wheel drive, which is something you can't get on the Sonata right now. Now again, going back to Kia, an all new Sorento will also be shown in the coming years. And that car I'm expecting to basically look like a two row version of the Telluride. Because if you guys remember, the Sorento used to serve as the company's three row offering. However, with the Telluride now in the segment or in the portfolio, it's allowed Kia to kind of shrink the Sorento and reposition it as something like a Santa Fe and a Ford Edge uh, competitor. Now switching back to Hyundai, you guys know the Tucson is one of the company's top selling vehicles and Hyundai is working on an all new version of the Tucson that can better compete with the likes of the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CRV, which are the two top selling vehicles in the segment right now. The best thing about the Tucson for enthusiasts is Hyundai will be introducing a performance version of that car, the Tucson N, which should probably get the 2.5 turbo from the Sonata N-Line paired with all wheel drive. It's basically going to make the compact SUV segment, which is typically a very boring family friendly segment, a little bit more appealing to people who, again, are trading up from their hot hatches or their sportier sedans. And finally, the last vehicle I wanna talk about, which I already mentioned, the upcoming Sonata N-Line with its 290 horsepower and over 300 pound-feet of torque. That car, I already drove a prototype model last month in Phoenix. I was blown away with um, the, the torque that I felt, uh, the eight-speed wet clutch 
dual clutch transmission, which will also be introduced in the new Kia Optima. It's a car that should put the midsize family sedan segment on notice because right now the only other player is really the Camry TRD. You can get a sportier version of the Accord, the Accord Sport 2.0, which again, isn't fully like a performance version, but maybe it will even tempt Honda to come out with an Accord Type R. We've been begging for something like that. <coughs> Sorry, Rob. So obviously Hyundai and Kia are no longer the same company that they were about three and a half decades ago. And if you guys still have the brand perception image of Hyundai as hope you understand nothing's drivable and inexpensive, you're really just kind of stuck in the past because Hyundai and Kia and Genesis are building world-class vehicles today that offer very little compromises compared to the most of the competition. They've obviously hired the right people in terms of design and in terms of handling dynamics. They offer a wide range of vehicles that should appeal to basically everyone on the market. And really in the future, we've got a new full EV coming. We've got a pickup truck coming. We've got new versions of their top selling vehicles. This is a brand that's obviously making the right decisions for today's marketplace. And it's no surprise to me why the brand is doing so well. Today, as I said, they are the third largest auto manufacturer in the world, right behind Volkswagen and Toyota in terms of overall volume. So obviously Hyundai has done a fantastic job with addressing their image problem. And really, if you guys aren't looking at one of their products, you are doing yourself a huge disservice. And it really did surprise me when I mentioned the vehicles that I personally would buy, because if you asked me that same question about five, 10, 15 years ago, I would have probably told you not very many, but Hyundai and Kia are obviously building phenomenal products that will appeal to the next generation of car shoppers. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video about the history of Hyundai and Kia, how they're absolutely killing it, how they're moving toward an electrified future with all these fresh products. If you guys are also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.